Greetings! I am Herbert Erbaderp, and today I'm going to paint this plastic 28mm scale T3485 made by Rubicon Models. This is also my entry for the Rubicon Models community group build. As you can see, I've prepared the model by attaching the turret and hull to disposable shot glasses using blue tack, which you might know as poster putty. The parts were primed with Vallejo Black Surface Primer. For the base coat, I airbrushed on some Vallejo Model Air Russian Green. Model Air is designed for airbrushing, thus the air part of the name, and so it doesn't need thinning. I did have to do a couple of coats to get a nice solid green over the black primer. Next, I do a very rough highlight. I mix the Russian green with model colour buff, approximately four parts green to one part buff. I try to spray this along the sharp edges and upper portions of the tank, especially places like the tops of the external fuel tanks. Don't forget to hit the turret with this too, particularly along the gun and hatches. I then apply more highlighting, this time with dry brushing, again using Russian green and buff. This time the mix was approximately two parts green to one part buff. I also focus this on the angle edges of the tank. I'm really not very careful with this so it does look a bit messy, but that's okay. I apply this to the wheels too, just to give them a bit of variety and colour. And of course don't forget the turret, mostly along the gun barrel, around the upper edges of the turret sides, on the ventilator bumps and hatches. I then mixed up a wash, consisting of one part water, one part secret weapon armour wash, and two parts secret weapon black green. I roughly apply this all over the tank, being careful not to let too much wash pool up in one place. The idea is that this wash adds a little bit of shadow to the gaps and recesses of the model and darkens the shade of the paint just a little bit. I then put a coat of gloss varnish on the turret sides in preparation for applying the decals. I'm using the decal sheet that Rubicon included with this kit. These decals are really quite good and go on very easily. I'm using Humbrol decal fix here and a brush to manipulate the decal into position. Sometimes the brush won't shift the decal and so I use my knife. Be very careful if you do this, it is very very easy to scratch the paint underneath the decal or damage the decal itself. I have absolutely no idea if the markings I've chosen to use here have any basis in reality. I just went with what I thought looked good. I believe the slogan reads, For Motherland. I think the decals look very good, though they are a bit too neat and clean for my liking. So I take a fine brush and gently apply some paint drips and runs using Vallejo Model Air White. Model Air White works well for this because it's so thin, which seems to make it a little bit less stark when applied to the model. I didn't do the same with the star. In my mind, the person that painted them did a better job, or maybe the white markings have been quickly applied in the field. Or maybe I was just lazy. Next, I dirty up the decals a little bit with undiluted soft tone applied with a fine brush. This dulls down the bright white of the decals. Next, I paint the tracks. For this, I use Vallejo model colour black grey. When doing this, be sure to get all the parts of the tracks that you'll be able to see, including the inner sides and the tops of the tracks, being careful to avoid getting any grey onto the hull. This would be slightly easier if you chose to leave the tracks off until after painting, though it's not at all hard to paint with the tracks attached. Of course, don't forget to paint the underside of the tracks as well. I also paint the rubber tyres on the road wheels using the same colour. I do my best to avoid getting grey on the rim of the wheel. At this time I also painted the spare track links on the front of the hull and the ones on the side. It's a good idea to be careful here to avoid getting grey on the hull. I also painted this thing here. It looks like some kind of shackle. Time to add some chipping effects. I use this method on most tanks I paint. I make a mix of model colour black grey and mahogany. About 70% black grey and 30% mahogany. I put some of this mix on a piece of spongy foam, the kind you'll find in blister packs of some models. I then wipe most of the paint off the sponge. You can see where I've done so on my hand. I then gently dab it onto the model in areas that seem likely to have paint chipped and worn off, like hard edges. One of the reasons I apply decals so early in the painting process is so that I can apply weathering like this chipping method over the top of them. It makes them look like they've been painted on and chipped through usage along with the rest of the paint. I then do some dry brushing with model colour London Grey. I apply this to the spare track links, the edges of the tracks, and the road wheel tyres. I figured doing this would add a little bit of variety to the colouring of these parts prior to the washes and weathering. Next, I applied a wash of dark tone to the tracks. This was diluted about 50-50 with water. I didn't apply this to the road wheels. I think if I were to do this again, I might dilute this a little bit less. I then applied undiluted dark tone to the road wheel tyres. Then I paint the hull machine gun using black primer. I use that because it covers better than the model air black that I have. Of course, don't forget to paint the underside of the gun. Another small detail to paint is the exhaust pipes. I painted these with model colour chocolate brown. I figured that would be a good colour to put rust over later. I then applied a coat of satin varnish in preparation for the AK interactive enamels that I wanted to try for weathering. I only just got these, so this is the first time that I've used them. 
I started by applying dark brown wash for green vehicles as a kind of pin wash. Capillary action draws it into the gaps fairly nicely, and it seems to add a nice dirty look to the lines, gaps and grills on the tank. These things were already dark from the previous wash. I think this has improved that and made it look much more dirty. I applied it to the wheel hubs in an effort to create a greasy look, as well as the hinges on the hatches. The great thing with these enamels is that you can easily remove any unwanted bits using white spirit on a brush or cotton swab. The layer of satin varnish protects the paint underneath it. Next I applied some AK Interactive Track Wash. I wasn't entirely sure what to expect with this, but I think it worked really well. I applied it with no thinning, but I think maybe next time I will thin it just a little bit. I simply painted onto every part of the tracks, including the spare track links. It's really nice and easy to remove from the road wheels or any other areas that you mistakenly put it. I then applied another coat of satin varnish. This is because I don't want the next layer of enamel to interfere with the previous one. Even when dry, the white spirit will activate the previous enamel layers if there's no varnish to separate them. I then add dark streaking grime. I think I might have gone a little bit overboard with this. The look I was going for is that of a tank that has been in a city or something and has had a lot of smoke and soot that settled on it and subsequently been rained on resulting in dark streaks all over. I'm not entirely sure I captured that look well, but I do like the result. I then clean up and try to blend the streaks using both a brush and cotton swabs dipped in the AK Interactive White Spirit. If you do remove too much, there's nothing stopping you from adding more of the enamel and repeating the process as many times as you like until you get the result you want. These enamels are very easy to use. They do smell a bit though. Next I figured I might add just a little bit of rust, but not too much. I don't think excessive rust on an actively used tank would be particularly realistic or good looking. I apply this to the exhaust pipes and the hinge on the round hatch at the rear of the hull, and I added some very light rusty streaks running down the hull beneath these. I also added some to these protrusions on the front and rear of the hull, which I think are lift or towing points. I did apply a fair bit of rust to the tracks, though I still kept this to a minimum trying to keep it mostly between the gaps of the treads. I also applied streaks of rust to the inner portions of the tracks, though I mostly removed it later. I figured the spare track links and the portion of the hull under them should have a fair bit of rust on them too, though still not too much. I applied a tiny bit of rust to these lifting points on the turret too, with some light streaking coming down from them. I think less is certainly more with this. After yet another coat of satin varnish, I did one last thing with the AK Interactive enamels. This was to add some dust. I did this with the airbrush and some very thinned AK Interactive Kursk Earth. It wasn't a very precise mix, but it was something like one part Kursk Earth to six parts thinner. I was not entirely sure this would work very well, so I was quite cautious as I went and sprayed in short bursts all over the tank, but mostly focusing on the tracks and lower parts of the hull, though I do apply it all over the entire tank. You can see here that it does make quite a big difference. The darker model is the other of the two of these tanks that I've painted exactly the same way prior to the application of the Kursk Earth. Personally, I think it's worked quite well. Next I applied a coat of AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish. As a final touch, I run a 2B pencil along some of the raised surfaces of the tracks to represent bare metal worn to a shine. Here's the end result. I'm pretty happy with these. That said, as usual, I can see some flaws and things that could be done better. But I believe if you aren't learning from what you do, then you're doing it wrong. I think I could certainly have toned down on the streak and grime a little bit, and I think I went a bit too heavy with the chipping in some parts. And I probably should have paid more attention to the ring part at the bottom of the turret. But overall, I'm quite happy with my results. As I mentioned, this is my first time using AK Interactive Enamels, and I'm very happy that this could still be a painting video and not a weathering product disaster video. I found the enamels very easy to use and I will definitely be picking up more colours and effects, especially dust colours, and probably rain streaks. It's good stuff and I wish I'd tried it out sooner. I'm much happier with the dust effects on these tanks than my previous efforts using Model Air Browns. It's given a very dirty appearance without really obscuring the paint beneath. As I mentioned at the start of this video, these are my entry into the Rubicon Models Community Group build. I spoke about it in this video here. There are only a couple of days left for this, so if you intend to take part, you'd better get cracking. Or if you've forgotten, this might be a reminder. I'm not sure how well my painting will stand up to the other entries. I've seen some really great stuff in that community. But that's okay. It's fun to participate and it provided me some good motivation to get these tanks finished. Now that I have some 28mm scale Soviet tanks built, I might have to see about putting together some infantry to go with them. And of course getting more tanks, which is the important thing. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful or interesting for you. Let me know what you think in the comments section below or on Facebook or Twitter, the links to which are in the description. If you would like to see more, it would be great if you clicked the subscribe button. I'll be putting in more effort to do more painting videos in the coming months, so if that's what floats your boat, stick around. Thanks for watching. Farewell.